Hey, 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 yep, <laughs> it's your boy, E. Hood, Pastor of Full Impact Ministries. Yep, a social media ministry that brings gut-wrenching truth about God's true nature through the scriptures. Not through theatrics and gimmicks and stunts, but through the but through the scriptures. We don't twist the scriptures or none of that. Go straight, go straight through the scriptures. Today I want to get right to it, and I want to talk to you about if you go to church, you are scripturally ignorant. If you go to church, you are scripturally ignorant. Now I know with that alone, a whole lot of y'all going to talk crazy, and, but I understand that. Because most of my messages are controversial anyway. But your life will prove the truth. Your life. Through the word. Whether you agree with the word or not. Your life will prove the word to always be truth. If you go to church, you're scripturally ignorant. Let's go over here to 2 Timothy. We're going to get into the word of God. Let's go over here to 2 Timothy. And you probably already know what scripture that I'm going to, but I'm going to go further than that. Let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 15. I mean, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. I'm going to read this verse from Napa 5. I want you to check it out. It says, study and be eager and do your utmost to present yourself to God approved, tested by trial. A workman who has no cause to be ashamed, correctly analyzing and accurately dividing, rightly handling and skillfully teaching the word of truth. That will eliminate most of the church right there, including your pastor that's in the pulpit. Let's keep going. Verse 16. But avoid all empty, vain, useless, idle talk, for it will lead people into more and more ungodliness. There's all kind of stuff come up in church about, about um, same sex, transgender roles, Jesus and a the therapist, women preachers, women with these titles, uh, chief apostle, apostle, bishop, men marrying men, men got on these... Uh, tight suits with their genitals hanging and and now you even got folks like Kiki Wyatt. She a pastor. <laughs> Lord Jesus. Take the wheel, Jesus. <laughs> Whoo. You got Will Murphy being an idiot. Jamal Bryant always been an idiot. You got these juggles out here. That's just my God. Boy, if you're in church, you are scripturally ignorant. You're scripturally illiterate. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. And their teaching will devour it, will eat its way like cancer and spread like gangrene. This, this is exactly what's going on in the church today. You all are getting so much false doctrine, but you're so ignorant of the scriptures, you don't even see it. And all they're doing is, all they're doing is preaching and teaching to your emotions, to your ignorance. That's all they're doing. Verse 18. No, uh, let's finish in verse 17. So it is with Hymenius and Philetus. 
these are the two people who had came before the people who had who had came before the church folks and began to teach a total different doctrine to the church. And by the church being scripturally illiterate, see, you're not the first ones. That was going on then. This is why this is written. This is why uh, Apostle Paul wrote this second letter to his spiritual son, Timothy. He was setting order in the church. This is a letter that that Apostle Paul sent to his spiritual son who he who he gave charge and authoritative ship over a church. And he said in order. <laughs> who have missed the mark and swerved from the truth by arguing that the resurrection has already taken place. You see that? Here are two men who was in the church teaching that the resurrection has already taken place. So we're talking about the second coming of Jesus. You got folks in church now teaching all kind of stuff. Take the scriptures and I mean make a mockery of the scriptures. It is so many men out here now who are pushing for women pastors. There was a guy <laughs> on Facebook named David Rogers, and he put up a post some weeks ago. He said, if you are still arguing or something about women preachers, then delete me now because I'm bringing a lot. Some to that nature. That's not word verbatim, but it's some to that nature. And I'm like, he's supposed to be an apostle. He's supposed to be a man of the scriptures. This is how far the church them falling away. I was in a church, and I can see this stuff so clear now. I was in a church where the apostle had women prophetess, evangelist, standing in the pulpit before the men teaching. And watch this. And these helpers was arrogant with it. Watch. When I started, when I first started my ministry, I was excited, you know, all that stuff there. Because I made the same mistake in my ministry and I teamed up with my friend. This is my friend. This is my friend. I teamed up with her. This is my friend. And we had a, a ministry together and I was, and I knew the scripture, but I was ignorant of it being, being placed in the ministry. I wasn't even thinking on that. I was so excited about having a ministry and I was bogus. No knock on her. No, 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 no on her. I love her. I love her to this day. We'll always love her. That's my girl. But I was bogus for allowing a woman to get up and stand before men and preach and teach the word. So I know what's good. I, I, I know... And I heard the Lord so clear a few years later when I had left Chicago. And he said, I didn't call you to do that, my Lord. <laughs> I didn't call you to do that. Then as I began to continue to read and stuff, stuff like that, I see what he was talking about. I'm like, my God, Lord, forgive me. I was ignorant. I was ignorant. It takes a humbleness. You know what, Lord? I messed up. I was gone. Home. The scripture talks about zeal without knowledge is not good. I had a zeal for that thing. But I didn't have 
the knowledge in this area. You got these male preachers today, got these women out here and thinking they apostles and, and they ordaining these women to be apostles, bishops. I ain't even seen women talking about chief apostles. What the, you got elders? She got 18. And she wanted so bad to be ordained, right? She asked me a few times to ordain her. And she wanted so bad to be ordained. And she left her um, other church because the apostle there didn't allow women um, preachers, right? Back then, I didn't understand it. So I told her, well, if God called you to preach, go on and preach. Me not knowing that he was right. <laughs> so then, as I got more in later on, she began to bring it back up to me. And she said that she, so then she went to this church where it's a woman preacher. She sat up under that. And this woman grabbed her and quickly ordained her. And she was going to have a, a service because she, or, 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 she was ordaining her to be an elder. <laughs> so she called me about it. I said, Auntie, do you know what an elder is? She didn't even know. I said, do you know what to look up? elder and go in the scriptures and look up. So I gave her some scriptures and took her to, and I said, now when you go and check that out, get back with me. I ain't heard nothing from my son. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. But, but look, this is what goes on in the church. People are so, so scripturally illiterate in the church. So you can teach these jokers anything and they going. You can misrepresent, misquoting everything with the scripture. These jokers going to holler and everything. This way, this, this why there are not many men in churches. Christianity, Christianity, Christian. No, no, Christian church. So-called Christian churches are the only churches I know that allow same sex, all this other foolishness, women preachers, same sex, men up there with tight clothing, like this Matthew Stevenson guy and all these, man. So-called Christian churches are the only churches I know. I've talked to Muslims, Jehovah Witnesses, Hebrew Israelites. I've talked to these folks. And when I began to talk to them about certain topics that I would bring up purposely, I told them about tithing, all the stuff here. And I'm like, I see how messed up the so-called Christian church is. The stuff that the Christ, so-called Christian church allow in the churches. Let's finish. Let's finish. Okay. Um, who have, verse 18, who have, Missed the mark and swerved from the truth by arguing that the resurrection has already taken place. They are undermining the faith of some. But the firm foundation of laid by God stands sure and unshaken, bearing this seal inscription. The Lord knows those who are his and let everyone 
who names himself by the name of the Lord, give up all iniquity and stand aloof from it. Listen now, the scripture said that the Lord know them that are his. This is why he said that, you know, Jesus said, there are going to be many going to come to me and say, Lord, Lord. Y'all know where I'm going. We've prophesied in your name, cast out many devils in your name, done great works in your name. He said, depart from me. I never, good God Almighty, knew you. I never knew you. Jesus said, his sheep know his voice. A strangers, they will not follow. Therefore, most of you folks in these churches cannot be Jesus' sheep. There's no way you Jesus' sheep and adhering to the madness that's going on in these churches today. Ain't no way up under the sun. You Jesus' sheep. And you adhering to this madness today. Ain't no way up under the God-given sun. And you going to these churches, holding up hands, thank you. No, you, no, 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 no. There's no way you adhere to that mess. And you say, you Jesus sheep? No, 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 no. Mm -mm, mm -mm. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also utensils of wood and earthenware. And some for honorable and noble use, and some for mineral and ignoble use. So whoever cleanses himself from what is ignoble and unclean, who separates himself from contact with contaminating and corrupting influences, will then himself be a vessel set apart and useful for honorable and noble purposes, consecrated and profitable to the master, fit and ready for any good work. Now, you still got a chance to come up out of them churches. If you're getting your word for the sole purpose of getting to know Jesus, the Christ, my man, a.k.a. J. Buggin, as your God as your Lord and your Savior, as your comforter, as your provider, as your healer, as your counselor, as your guider. Okay. Flee also youthful lusts, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace, with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Most of you people's leaders are antichrist for real. They ain't thinking about Jesus. They thinking about their pockets. They care nothing about you. Nothing. And you so scripturally illiterate, you don't even see it. Churches have broken up so many homes. I truly believe that me being in the church system was a major role of my, of me and my ex-wife getting a divorce, all the, all the other stuff. But I believe that that was a major tool. I did it. I really do. I truly believe churches these churches break up homes. They play a major role in it, shall I say. Play a major role in it. Because most of these, see, we think that most churches are filled with single women. That's a half truth. Because a lot of these women are married. Their husbands just don't go. But it also shows that a lot of these husbands are not really gatekeepers over their household. Because there's no way that my wife 
could be going to a church and I don't know what the hell is going on. And if I don't like it, I'm going to tell you, you're going to either come up out of here or we out. You got to make up your mind. Because that's doctrine being indoctrinated in your wife, man. That is false doctrine being indoctrinated in your wife. And most of these wives honor these pastors way more than honor their own husbands. These pastors don't care about your husband not coming to church, woman. They want to control you. They want to control your pockets. You the one bringing the money there. Most of these churches are are funded by women. It's the women that's funding this. Man, if I man, if I had knew then the stuff I know now about life, period. Well, I'd be so far ahead. Let's keep on. But foolish, but refuse, shut your mind against, have nothing to do with trifling. Ill-informed, unedifying, stupid controversies over ignorant questions, questionings. For you know that they foster strife and breed quarrels. And the servant of the Lord must not be quarrelsome, fighting and contending. Instead, he must be kindly to everyone and mild-tempered, preserving the bond of peace. He must be a skilled and suitable teacher, patient and forbearing and willing to suffer wrong. <sighs> he must correct his opponents with courtesy and gentleness in the hope that God may grant that they will repent and come to know the truth. Lord, I pray these jokers re repent. Change the way they think. See, we think repent me. Oh, I'm sorry, Lord. No, that no, 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 no. Change the way you change your lifestyle. Change the way you think. Get in the word so that so that your flesh can be crucified from that control. Your flesh can be crucified from that greed. Your flesh can be crucified from that homosexual activity. Your flesh can be crucified from that adultery. Your flesh can be crucified from, from all the witchcraft and lying and conniving. Your flesh can be crucified from that antichrist. Your flesh can be crucified from being scripturally illiterate, preacher. He must... Yeah, okay. He must correct his opponents with courtesy and gentleness in the hope that God may grant that they will repent and come to know the truth, that they will re that they will perceive and recognize and become accurately acquainted with and acknowledge it, and that they may come to their senses and escape out of the snare of the devil. Having been held captured by him, henceforth to do his to do his God's will. The church now, it's the church of Satan. God ain't in there. Satan has took a hold of the church and have wooed the people with false hope. All that garbage prayer you're not doing, all that, all that ungodly giving, ungodly tithing, ungodly praising, ungodly worshiping, ungodly prophesying, ungodly preaching, ungodly teaching. God is nowhere in none of that ungodly laying on hands, ungodly uh, casting out devils. God is nowhere in none of the stuff that's going on, ungodly ordinations. God is nowhere in none of them churches. And I know y'all going well, my church, I don't care what you say. If you in church, 
you are scripturally illiterate. Two things that will really keep me from even going to a church and which should keep you from going to a church too. If, if your pastor is teaching tithing and they're for tithing, and if your pastor doesn't believe that Jesus is God, if your pastor doesn't believe that Jesus, God, and the Holy Spirit are one, you ain't never, hey, all caps with exclamation points, you ain't never got the word about me coming in now. I've had a few people invite me to their church, and I say, don't invite me to your church. Ever. If we want to remain cool, don't invite me to your church. I said, that stuff is not God. He said, you're a pastor. I said, yes. Yes, I am. I said, my ministry is on social media. Full impact ministries. Go check it out. I said, I preach and teach against most, if not all, of the stuff that go on in church buildings. Because it's not God. See, I don't care what people say. The scriptures, the scriptures always hold truth, especially when they are presented accurately and correctly with the spirit of love and power. God don't want you to be ignorant of who he is. He loves you. He don't want you to be stuck. That's why Jesus was able to say over in Luke 4 when he said the spirit of the Lord. Hey, when he stood right up in the temple and said the spirit of the Lord is upon me. And he went on through all his attributes. He went through all that. That's why he was able to say over in the gospel of Matthew chapter 11 when he said come unto me. Yep. Oh, you that labor and I ever laid. He went through the whole thing. This is why the scripture tells us to study so I step approved. Listen to what the this is my last. This is my last. We're gonna go down here to chapter three. The same book, 2 Timothy, but we're going to chapter three. And starting at verse one. But understand this: that in the last days, yep, yeah, <laughs> will come set in perilous times of great stress. And trouble, hard to deal with and hard to bear. My Lord. Boy, we there now, I think. Life done brought some heavy weight, boy. Some heavy weight. My Lord. Huh. For people will be lovers of self and utterly self-centered. Lovers of money and aroused by and inordinate greedy desire for wealth. That's all in the church. And your preacher know it. All he got to do is bring you a scripture and preach to your spirit of greed, preach to your love of money, preach to your lust for material things. And he got you. He got you. This is why they ordain these women to be preachers. Because they know that their churches are filled with women. And they want that money. I've been to a church. I, I used to belong to a church where the apostle allowed these women. I didn't know no better then. Well, apostle allowed these women to get up before the men and just preach. And they was hard preachers too. Hard preachers and teachers. Hard ones. Evil as hell. It's preaching. Bam. And that was so out of God's order. So out of God's order. That was so out of God's order. My boy, when I think about the stuff I've been in in church settings, 
when I think about the stuff that I've been a part of in church, I'm like, my God, boy, my soul just aches. Like, my Lord, I didn't know. Like, my God. When I think about all that stuff that I've been in in church, man, Ooh, okay, let's finish. My Lord. Proud and arrogant and contemptuous bolsters. They will be abusive, blasphemous, scoffing, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, and profane. They will be without natural human affections, callous and inhumane, relentless, admitting of no truce or appeasement. They will be slanderers, false accusers, troublemakers, intemperate and loose in morals and conduct. This is why you have these uh, churches where they have all these uh, devilish rappers come to the church and begin to perform. We had this uh, woman with her rap, rap crew and they begin to sing a song to about twerking for Jesus, my Lord. God, good God of mine, boy. Jesus, take the wheel. Hey, take the wheel, Jesus. Take the wheel because the church about to crash and burn, player. Crash and burn. This, this have on stage twerking, talking about twerking for Jesus. My Lord. Boy. Okay. <laughs> Loose and moral in conduct, uncontrolled and fierce, haters of good. So now, when you get preachers like me that teach this stuff, oh boy, look here. Boy, look at here. Look at here. Man, listen. <laughs> Whoo! They will be treacherous, betrayers, rash, and inflated with self-conceit. They will be lovers of sensual pleasures and vain amusements more than and rather than lovers of God. This is why. They have all these theatrics and stunts and gimmicks going on in the church and the uh, pulpit. It is like a big old theater now. Lights, cameras, action. All kind of demonic, ungodly stuff going in, going in the pulpit. And boy, the scripturally illiterate people in the pews are uh, clapping and enjoying all that all that mess and on their way to hell. For although they hold a form of piety, true religion, they deny and reject and are strangers to the power of it. Their conduct belies the genuineness of their profession. Avoid, listen to this in. Avoid all such people. Turn away from them, my Lord, my Lord. For among them are those who worm their way into homes and captivate silly and weak-natured and spiritually dwarfed women, loaded down with the burden of their sins and easily swayed and led away by various evil desires and seductive impulses. You see this all in the church. Let me see. These weak women will listen to anybody who will teach them. Boy, these scriptures ain't lying. <laughs> 
You don't even have to go deep into these scriptures to see this stuff in the church. You ain't got to. You don't have to exegesis nothing in here. You don't have to hermeneutic nothing in here. All you have to do is read it. <laughs> you can read this word verbatim and you see it. You ain't got to break down nothing. <laughs> in verse 7 again. These weak, and it's the last verse. No. No, I got one more verse down there. But that's it. These weak women will listen to anybody who will teach them. They are forever inquiring and getting information, but are never able to arrive at a recognition and knowledge of the truth. My Lord. There's no way that if that if the teaching is taught with the truth that the church will be the way it is now. No way. Because the doctrine that's being taught in the church is one of the big reasons why the black community is so jacked up. Mom Singer, Martha Singer, the lady who had created uh, Planned Parenthood, uh, abortion and all that, she said that if she can get to the black pastors, <laughs> if she can get to the black pastors, her mission will be complete. If she can get to the black pastors, because they're going to bring that doctrine. This is why, why do you think that when election time is here, all these white, white electoral people, they are able, all these white political candidates are able to go to your black church and stand in your pulpit and recite to you lies and deception and trickery. It's because your black pastor has been paid off. Guaranteed. Any black pastor that allow a politician, especially a white politician, to come into his pulpit. Well, I shouldn't say white because all of them are rotten now. But any pastor that allows a politician to come into his pulpit and, and actually stand before the people and speak to you, your pastor has been paid off or grant a large sum of money, something. It wasn't out the kindness of your pastor's heart. Believe that. I remember I went with this apostle and we went down there to the juvenile center on Roosevelt and Western in Chicago. It was this big room, right? Where you had the pastors on this side of the room. The aldermen and all them people was on this side of the room. The mayor was supposed to come, but the mayor's assistant came. They had a big screen up there, right? And they were showing some young children, some young Juvenile people who was about to get out. And they and they would offer grants to who would take them. And this one came up and this pastor stood up and said, a black pastor, stood up and said, how much is the grant for that one? My Lord. My Lord. My Lord. <sighs> Last scripture. Second Timothy chapter three, verse 16. We all should know it, but you're still ignorant of it. Every scripture is God breathed, given by his inspiration and profitable for instruction, for reproof and conviction of sin for correction of error 
and discipline in obedience and for training and righteousness in holy living in conformity to God's will in thought, purpose, I'm done, and action. All scripture. All scripture. Oh, let me tell you. I've been in some stuff in church. I've seen some stuff in church. I've been a part of a lot of foolishness in church. That's how I know what I'm talking about. That's why I teach and preach the way I do. This ain't something I read in the book. No, I, I, I've been a part of this. I experienced it. I learned firsthand that God ain't got nothing to do with this foolishness. I pray that you all begin to get into your word for the sole purpose of getting to know God's true nature towards you. Check out my videos on YouTube, Full Impact Ministries. Hit the subscribe button. Like, share, leave a comment. Let folks know that your boy E. Hood, Full Impact Ministries, is bringing some hard truths, hard truths. Hard truth. You got to put on your big boy drawers and big girl panties for this here stuff here. This ain't for the week. <laughs> this ain't for the week. You got to be grown for this here. Then go to my TikTok page as Saved and Educated. Check me out. I'm on Facebook as Arthur Eric F. Hood. And I got a, a page on their full impact ministry. I'm all over the place. You can just Google me. I'm everywhere. I'm everywhere. Yeah, social media for real. But my prayer is my prayer is that you all really begin to study your word. Really. For to get to know God's true nature towards you. It'll blow your mind. When I began to do that, the first thing I did was left the church. Watch this. And that's my prayer for you. <laughs> it's your boy, Hood Pastor Full Impact Ministries. If you go to church, you're scripturally illiterate. I'm out. Peace.